Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Renault Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation. Where today we're talking about having two plans. Not one plan, but two plans. So I've been thinking about this. We've been talking about a baseball coach that I had when I was playing college baseball. He's one of the best hitting instructors I've ever been around. He had the ability to go in and just transform a hitter with a 30-minute to maybe one-hour conversation with that hitter. He could totally transform that hitter. They could be a completely different hitter on the other side of that conversation. And we've been talking about it. He would go in and he would give the hitter a bigger goal, a bigger target to shoot for. And they could give, give a precise plan for that at-bat, for every at-bat that he had. And then he would set up what we call filters, where these filters would help the, the hitter filter out which pitches to swing at, which pitches to not swing at. And the goal for the hitter, most of the time, the number one plan was to drive the baseball, to really crush the baseball as hard as he could. And so it required getting a pitch that he could do so with. And we worked on developing the mechanics for that. But then there's also another plan. He said, if we're going to get really good at plan number one, it means that many, many times we're going to get put in situations where we get two strikes on us because they're going to throw us strikes that are good pitches. They're strikes, but they're not good pitches for us to hit hard. And we're going to take those, which means we're going to get the two strikes more often than most hitters will, which means we need a second plan, which means we have to be good at hitting with two strikes when we're backs against the wall, so to speak. You only got one more strike left until you strike out. We've got to become excellent two strike hitters, which is a completely different plan and approach. We go into more of a defensive mode. And you had to have two plans. I've just been thinking about this. I think this is great wisdom for just about every area of life. Have two plans. What's the aggressive plan? The plan that's very focused, very aggressive. But then what's the plan for when things kind of get out of control? You got some pressure on you. Maybe you lose control of things a little bit. What's the plan for those types? Have two plans. And sometimes in a baseball game, we would go to the two-strike plan when it wasn't two strikes. Maybe we're facing a pitcher who's just really, really good. We don't want to get the two strikes against him. We might go to that two-strike plan earlier. And there's some other situational times where we might go to that two-strike plan at other times. And it's learning when to know to go to plan one or plan two. But we just had those two plans. So we're going to take communion over this today. Asking God to help us to understand this and just apply this to our lives. But let's pray first and then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening. Their families, their friends, everybody connected to them. And all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten, he was bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. Expand our borders and our territory. Nope, I'm getting off track on our prayer there. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. 
expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today and help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we're asking for your help today. Teach us about having two plans and how to apply this consistently into our lives, Lord, just in all the different areas of our lives. And we thank you that the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. God, you laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by you, smitten by you. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in your sight. All through his one sacrifice. And you raised him up from the dead. You seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. And you raised us up together with him and made us sit together with him. And we get this opportunity today to remember. To remember our union with you through the sacrifice of Jesus. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. We get to have this covenant relationship with God. A covenant of love and peace and grace and forgiveness. A partnership with him. And so, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. So I've been thinking about this concept of having two plans. About applying this into our health and fitness. For example, in your nutrition. I think we need two plans. What's the plan we're, we're using to stay on track to make progress? to really accelerate results. But then what's the other plan? What plan do we default to when we got to go into defensive mode? Maybe we're around a bunch of junk food. Maybe we're out of our normal routine. Maybe we're not around healthy food, whatever it is. Maybe we're hungry. Maybe we're tempted to emotional eat, any of those things. What's, this, what's the other plan we shift to during those times? Same thing in our in our fitness. On those days when you don't feel like doing it, all these types of things. We need a plan we can shift to on those days. But I hope it's been helpful for you. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.